how strong they are. Unless I can do perception? Um, so, I mean, I'm not going to get you to roll perception because the conversation sort of at the end of last session uh, kind of revealed that they were already all talk. Their weapons and equipment came from a box called props. Um, they seemed to be talking up a big game. Any sort of conversation about competition that uh, Ben Route Stag Strength uh, was talking. Oh, God, I have. Yep. Um, seemed to be met with stares of uh, apprehension from his his allies behind them. Um, like, he, he was talking up a big game and they were like, huh, right, okay. Um, what's he getting us into? Uh, and then, at long last, uh, oh, should I haven't even checked the map? I wonder. Uh, you're all standing there in front of the group as they are trying to uh, convince convince them that they're with uh, hiring, excuse me, bodily functions, uh, they're with hiring over Golem. Okay. Um, is there any chance it could be five feet further back? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so at this point, uh, Ben Routes sort of calling forth. So send send in your your champion, your your the man who protects you, uh, the, the metal man. You said yes. Can I just charge him right away? Yeah, if you like. <laughs> so I'll get you to roll an initiative though. I will do. Because they're at initiative six. So the odds of you losing, I think, are impossible. <laughs> yeah, damn, you get first. So Ben Rout's standing at the front. You you shoulder charge him. As he sees you bowling forwards, uh, you just see his face contort into... Oh, bollocks! Uh, as you slam into him, uh, you didn't target him. But I will assume that you're going to hit. Sorry. Yep. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and like a hot knife through butter for original uh, similes, you just pound through this man. He goes flying backwards. His armor crumples underneath. It, it seems entirely uh, dress armor. Nothing offering any protection whatsoever. You simply barrel through him pushing him back between his allies. Uh, all the wind and breath is knocked out of him. Were you wanting to be lethal? No, no, I was not. I just, I wanted to very quickly push in, hit him once. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm, I'm kind of imagining, like, I, like, turn, like, I'm not even interested in engaging it, and then turn back and just backhand him, like, ten feet <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll say that happens. He, uh, he shouts, oh, whoa there! Uh, and then you do exactly what you just said, and it doesn't kill him, but you know for sure that he is definitely unconscious. Uh, he collapses in a heap. Um, his friends sort of take a step back each, uh, looking down. Oh, oh shit. Oh, oh dear. Uh, the one to the left that's got sort of more impressive looking armor but still uh who knows if they're props or not um tries to step forwards uh warily he'll step up towards you i still have a swift action left right or did i lose that when i charged uh charge is the last action you can do right yeah okay yeah i'll let him take his turn this should be it so he'll he'll step up and uh he'll swing his uh it looks to be a mace but as it clangs off you, there's no real weight behind it. Uh, it just sort of bounces off your armor. It's like being hit with a, a, a training stick in some sort of fencing yard. Um, nothing happens. <laughs> uh, he looks down at the weapon he's holding. He looks up at you. You can't see his face inside of his armor, but you can smell the fear if you had olfactory senses. Uh, 
<laughs> Good technique. Or what? <laughs> I did roll a 21. I, I have to admit, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> that would have actually hit probably most of the party. But it just bounces off your shoulder. And you can have another turn. The rest, the other three just look around, bewildered. Uh, Evil Con. Uh, I, I, I guess you, you keep the contract? Is he? He's still interested in attacking, or did that kind of do it? Uh, Grand shot? Yeah, no, he, he's looking down. He's looking up at you, basically just waiting for, oh shit, what am I, I going to do here? What's going to happen to me for this? I want to do an MBA. Is this like a forehead flick? Go for it. Roll it. Oh, shit, that was supposed to be on. Yeah, that hits. Uh, you smash his helmet, uh, which crumples again, under not a heavy blow, it just crumples, and you hear breaking of bone underneath, uh, and he- I didn't, I didn't even want to break any bones, I just <laughs> flicked them on the forehead. Oh, so I thought you meant, like, your forehead? Like, headbutting him? Oh, okay. no. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I misunderstood. Okay, so you flick the head- and uh, he, he sort of stumbles backwards, you confused. Like your foot style. <laughs> now try my nuts to your fists. <laughs> <sighs> the rest of them sort of look around and hold their hands up. Uh, you, you got this. Perhaps, perhaps we can offer a, a discounted rate. Golem is just going to take one step towards whoever said that. That was uh, Nizzy over to the right. Ah, they step back. T ten gold a day? Another. Okay, okay, five, five. A gold apiece, that's fair. Um, I've been, how, let me check my pockets. Your pockets? Yes, okay, I have like 200. <laughs> so, what I'm gonna do is, how long is the rest of the... Probably about halfway, so maybe another 20 days? Um... Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna drop a bag of a hundred gold on uh, Ben Rout's unconscious body. <laughs> you step back over to Ben Rout's dag string, drop the gold onto his body. Uh, Firkin and Evil Con quickly run up and, and grab it and uh, you know, try and slap Ben Rout awake. And we, we did it, we got the job! Ben Rout, we, we, we did it, we did it! Finally, for once! You are now relieved. You may keep your down payment. <laughs> Thank you for your services. But can we can we travel with you? <laughs> All right, now I'm going to look over at the rest of the group because up until this point this was just goal I'm having fun, but that's uh... Well, well... I know. We will be going into the very heart of. Oh, you cut off at the end there. The heart of what? The heart of danger. Uh, um. Uh, are you. How far are you traveling? I look around to Flint because Aurelius doesn't really know. Uh, I don't remember either. <laughs> uh, north. Yes, uh, we'll be traveling north and for a while. Uh, well, perhaps we can travel with you as far as Daggerford, if that's where you're heading. Is, is that where we're heading? 
Probably. I don't know. I can't find the map. Yeah, I can't find the map either. Oh. Go to the west. Uh, well, I... <laughs> Right, we're headed to Dragon Spear right now. Day of Fruits pretty ways not. I don't know. Well, I, we might get there eventually. Close connection lost. Man, that image, that map is still not loading for me. Oh, really? Yeah, but I, think it's, I think it's like my fantasy cards of my computer or something. I have no idea why it won't load. Ooh. Literally everything else loads but that. I um I lost host connection, so I'm gonna wait until the server realizes I've disconnected and then re Yeah. But uh the implication is I'm just giving them the one hundred gold so they'll stop bothering us. <laughs> Oh, but they're great. And I did promise them I would hire them if they fought you. They did fight you. Yeah, okay. There, that, that hundred gold is the payment. And it, since you made a deal with them, yeah, they can follow us along, carry our stuff. There are roadies now. Exactly. You see, I wasn't even going to pay them at all. I was just going to tell them that they could work for us for exposure, you know, like all true artists. I was just hoping Golem would murder them. <laughs> Golem is a gentle soul. Uh, they only yeah, that's murder. a bit too renegade for Golem. So, Golem in terms like of how, how far you're all traveling, you know you're going as far as Waterdeep. That's where this caravan has mainly been organized. Um, you don't know if the cultists intend to stop at Waterdeep or continue on, or perhaps stop earlier, but caravan at a whole was organized with the sort of the public members to travel from boulders gate to Waterdeep. yeah then i'll just uh well we're traveling as far as Waterdeep, and you're welcome to uh join us and carry our luggage uh, of course of course and and we'll make that gold uh worth your while we'll 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 earn it i, I, I promise you uh this is nizzy Talking for for the unconscious. Uh, <laughs> and of straight. course, you have your own supplies. Yes. Um. Uh, they look around. They see the the box that says props, and uh, Nizzy sheepishly dips her hand into the coins, pulls out a fistful of them. We we can pay. <laughs> Excellent. I think uh, twenty days will probably come to about well a hundred gold. A piece should cover it, yes. That's food, water, uh, any, any medication you may need. Romy, nice Romy, a diplomacy. One of them's probably in a coma. <laughs> but, on the bright side, if you get more of your friends involved, I'm here there's, for a, now. there's a 100 gold sign-up uh, <laughs> Of course, it costs them 100 gold to join us, but just imagine how much crap. money you only make. That's right. As you, you sort of say that, uh, Nizzy nods, of, of course, of course, and you see her drop the coins back into the bag and, and pass it over, but you do notice that she pockets a small fistful of the coins. You get back uh, 85 gold pieces. Or rather, you get 85 of Golem's gold pieces. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> that is basically I, 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 what I expect to really. happen when Morgid is involved. <laughs> Jeez. He is the lovable scamp who, uh... Puts the scam in scamp? <laughs> yes. I don't know about lovable, but yeah, yeah. Everybody loves Mojit in his houses of exotic wares. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have coffee. I don't know what it is, but it, it, it looks fancy. So, um, 
Do uh, one of you know how to play an instrument? That's to the actors. Spike, that's you. I Did think he's yelling Spike at his children. Died. Yeah, he's probably giving them a good beating. I still can't reconnect to the freaking start. Or why is internet taking the dump? Oh, that might explain why I can't reconnect. So I just had the strong smell of cleaning products and my daughter's bloody soaking the bench and... Ugh. It's not good. Alright, I'm back. What was the, the question? Uh, I'm still having trouble reconnecting, but also I think... Uh, they were asking if any of them play instruments, if they're, like, competent, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, after the, the first day, once things have settled down a bit and you get into conversing with them, um, they do uh, inadvertently, probably, uh, reveal that they are a traveling troupe of uh, actors and actresses. And uh, a few of them do play music for their, their stage productions. There is someone who plays a lute, someone who plays a drum, and a... Uh, a triangle. Couldn't think of any no, other instruments. No, who did you <laughs> What? A drum and a triangle is not enough for you? No, I, I require more percussion. It's two triangles. You yeah, still right. can't connect. Is, am I, like, showing is still connected? Nope. No, the show's I mean... disconnected. Maybe restart your computer? Yeah, let me try that. Oh. Oh, also, wait for you to come back. Play, uh, can they play more than a feeling? Nah, that's the only song they can play. Yes. It's gonna be a good trip. The loot guy plays um, Sex Man's on there. What? Uh, how? With his loot. <laughs> uh, all right, sure. Seems reasonable. Yeah, why not? Hey, if you can play it on a guitar, you can play it on a loot. Is that is that how that works? Mm -hmm. I didn't know you could play that on a guitar. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, Plays it on guitar? That, really. Just imagine it's on a loop. It, it's, it's magic, you actually blow into the <laughs> My longbow just plays Baker Street the whole time. <laughs> Wonderful. There's a kazoo player who plays Baker Street. There you go. It's canon now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm sure there's someone doing that already. Yes, there is! Thank you, internet. I I'm not even surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so bad! Oh. <laughs> oh, it's fucking awful! <laughs> you mean amazing? <laughs> oh, that's so good! So that's how I'm gonna be doing my sonic damage from now on. I... <laughs> you get a soundboard of kazoos. I have so many people to share this with. <laughs> Fuck it out. Oh. 
<laughs> Crying. Oh. <laughs> Just let us know when you're back, Kibash. Oh. Yep, no, the show's connected. I, th I think they're actually off. <laughs> and when you get really, really serious. Oh, you're connected! Woohoo! Showing connected on fantasy grounds. Oh god. Oh boy, fantastic. Oh yes. Fantastic. I don't know how you're going to be playing Kazoo's at once, but you'll manage. It really is, we're talking about. Hey, Kazoo's is nothing. A large amount of pulleys and strings. Okay, now I'm just imagining Aurelia is wearing one of those one man band things. Yes. <laughs> like a Dick Van Dyke, but just with Kazoo's? Yes. <laughs> like he pulls a string and a big one makes a tuba sound. I was kind of <laughs> imagining something it's like this. Kazoo. Yes. Oh no. Yeah. Oh yes. Fuck, he's so into that, oh eh? <laughs> Do what you love, that is... and you'll never work a day in your life. Oh, man. Because no one will hire you if they found this video. <laughs> I'd hire you, <laughs> Your job is to walk around the workplace playing your horn. <laughs> Wait, you'd have to stop walking there, otherwise you'd just have like a, a monotone burp, 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 everywhere you walk. This is true. This is, oh my gosh. Oh my god. I can't stop watching it. Is this the like the are. new woodworking videos? What? I don't... What is that? Is that the piano? Yeah, it's like a one piano band. <laughs> That's actually an impressive bit of engineering. That is insane. <laughs> one of our caravans is just dedicated to the machine. Just a guy on the back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Forty days of this. Just every <laughs> night when the the caravans calm down, the horses go to sleep. You hear someone shout out, "Heard it, Joe!" And then this starts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like that one um, part uh, from Fury Road, except not. <laughs> <laughs> so like an anti do for you. Yes, fantastic. That is, I can't uh, stop watching this guy. This is crazy. <laughs> he's like really actually quite nimble for an old he's, dude. He's really getting into it. How could you not though, with that much energy in that music? It's an American photo player. Huh. All right. So anyway, after that uh, tangent. Wonderful tangent. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, welcome uh, to the games, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this happens far too often. Way too often. Uh, okay, so I have an actual idea for what to do with these guys. Go for it. Are you, like, can you just tape them to yourself? <laughs> no, I mean... Are you going to make them into minion. a one-man band? Just strap them to yourself, and as you walk, they scream? Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, like s strap one of them on, like strap their feet underneath my feet so I can play them <laughs> like the foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Uh, yes, what's oh, going no. on? No, no, one of them actually rolled plus seven to hit, which is kind of impressive. 
So they want to pick up some uh, real weapons and kind of try to train them a little. <laughs> like, I'm not impressed by their performance, but I'm kind of a little bit impressed. Hey, you know what? Go for it. Let's see if you can yeah. train them into you, actual... You do you, buddy. <laughs> I just want to have a training montage. <laughs> <laughs> For the next 20 days, you have a training montage of shaping one of them of your choice into a lean, mean fighting machine. Or at the least a countdown. first level fighting machine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're second level. Oh, I'll have okay. you know. I'll have you know. Alright, so the next day goes by. People roll me a series of D20s um, for the next five days. Five of us, so everyone gets one. Alrighty. On day three, uh, there is a thing that happens. <laughs> I like how you've got the music in the background. Oh, I'm listening to Kelly Ope music now. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> So yeah, uh, for the next few days, as you're you're training, montaging these people and well, one of the people, uh, the Calio music is playing in the background. Joe hitting it every day. Um, there's two days and two nights of rain. Uh, at the end of these, um, there's a, a a massive storm, lightning, thunder, uh, sheet hail, and a strange whistling sound on the wind. And in the morning. The entire caravan awakens to see that the surrounding countryside, including the road, is blanketed with fungus. It grows everywhere, including on the outside of some of the caravans, uh, that, you know, the, the tops of the caravan and stuff that provided shelter. Um, there is a few, uh, cries of pain that can be heard up and down the caravan as people wake up. And the, the cries of pa pain begin to grow louder and louder um what do you all do when you wake up in this situation it's almost impossible to walk between the the caravans without stepping on any of this fungus uh, the only non-organic here i think it makes the most sense for me to go check things out i don't want any of you breathing these spores in and then i have to put you down in a very touching dramatic scene <laughs> what if these spores are flammable uh, don't Let's use not set the entire caravan on fire. Yeah, Good well, point. I guess I guess while Gollum goes check things out, I'll try and roll a nature check to see if I recognize this fungus. Yeah, go for it. So, Gollum, you're gonna walk up and down the caravan and see what what the, the situation is. Oh, you did. I I'm still in the call though. I think it must be your Fantasy Grounds connection. Um, oh, yeah, you're in Fantasy Grounds as far as, like, it shows your icon and stuff. Like, I'm still connected in the call, so I can still participate. It's just really weird. Hmm. Okay. Well, with um, Flint having a look at the mushrooms before Golem steps down into the, uh, the mushroom pit, um, there is... Uh, the, the gut feeling, Flint, that these mushrooms are deadly poisonous. As you sort of look down, you swear as well while you're, you're looking at them, trying to identify them, that they seem to be growing. When you first noticed them, they were maybe the size of champagne corks. Uh, now they're maybe half again that size, and you, you swear you can see them growing. All right. Uh, well, if they're deadly poisonous. Golem should be fine because you're immune to poison, right? I think I get a you... bonus on saves versus ongoing. Yeah. But I also have a really good fort, so I'm probably fine. All right. Well, relay to the rest of the organic group that they should definitely not touch this stuff. All righty. As you do so, uh, Golem steps down into the. Uh, the fungus and begins to walk through it. It's, it's nearly impossible to avoid stepping on any of them. It's just completely blanketed. You can see on the map it's, it's fairly thick with this fungus. 
Um, and there is a puff of black spores and shrieks of pain come from Gollum. And it takes you all a moment to realize that it's not Gollum that's shrieking in pain, but the mushrooms as they are crushed and release the spores. They themselves are screaming in pain as they emit a dying cry. What the hell? The screaming continues up and down the caravan, and you sort of look up and down Gollum as you've got a good sight now, and you can see a few other people are sort of tentatively stepping into the mushrooms, and the cries of pain are coming from them. Most of them have got like a cloth over their face, they're pretty worried, um, these clouds of spores that are puffing up into the sky, but the, the screams most definitely are just from the fungus. No one seems hurt or in pain. Um, Spidey, Dragle, whereabouts on the caravan would we find... Dragle, Dragal, Dragal. Yeah, I'm probably just not far away from Flint because we're probably similar, you know, in character wise. Yep. So perhaps you were a hired uh, guard or, or bodyguard for one of the other caravans, and you're seeing this situation much like the others. You're woken up after. Uh, a couple of weeks of traveling with this caravan to find the carpets covered in mushrooms that are shrieking in pain. Uh, Joe is still going hard on the Calliope in the background. <laughs> Trying to drown out the screams of pain. Does anyone make a path through the mushrooms? Do you try to do anything? What's what's the plan? How are you going to get out of this situation? Um, go ahead. I'm going to climb up on top of my caravan that okay. I appropriated. There's a, a couple of mushrooms that you sort of brush off, and because uh, you're not crushing them, you're sort of brushing them off as you climb up. Instead of shrieks, you just hear ah as they fall to the ground. As they fall. <laughs> I'm going to start yelling out to the other carav caravaneers, yep. ca caravaners, yep, whatever, uh, selling my exotic spices to ward off the mush. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, All mean. right. So you start calling it out. A few people, I'll have some, but how am I supposed to get to you? You raise a fine point, my friend. <laughs> Here, let me sell you these mushroom walking shoes. <laughs> exactly. They're completely normal shoes. Um, how, how do we get the shoes? <laughs> do we uh, need to cut a path through here? What if we just, like, shuffle instead of squashing them so they just get pushed out of the way? Well, I mean, like... If they're not that big, was like what size of a cork head you said, and kind of slowly grow, or well, not slowly, but growing at that speed. Yeah, growing at a pace fast enough that you, if you look at them for a, a couple of minutes, you can see physically that they are growing in size. Uh, we should get moving before they get too big to get through them. Yeah, I was gonna say we don't really need to cut a path; just fucking run over. Them. Yeah. So how how far? Ahead of us, does or do they end? Um, it's it's hard to see. At least as far as sort of the next bend in the road. So certainly a few hundred meters, uh, stretching out ahead and behind. Who knows how far they go beyond that? Uh. Yeah, we should probably just keep moving. Yeah, honestly. All right. Now, some of the other caravaneers are, are worried about the spores. Um, a few of them are trying to put cloths over their, their horse and oxen and you know, other beasts of burden uh, to stop them breathing in the spores. Um, and a few of them are, are wanting to uh, figure out a way to, to clear them without them releasing the spores. Uh, you see um, a couple of people nearby that are just got a broom out, got a branch from a nearby tree and are just scraping out a path in front of the animals they don't even seem to be worried about the sports their their faces uncovered they're just clearing it out um head down you know putting in the yakka 
and he's just starting to move through it. Now, none of you notice any untoward uh, effects of these spores. A few of you would have definitely breathed them in. They, you know, they get close enough to your face that you, you're breathing. Uh, Golem, you don't have any issue walking through them. Just the screams of pain as you, you're moving up it. But, um, yeah, so some of the some of the caravaneers don't particularly want to move. They're just sort of calling out for a, uh, a way through this without breathing in the spores. But some, again, quite happily just sweeping a path. Golem will stay a bit ahead of the group and just kind of stomp a path through. All right. Uh, while you're making this process, I'm going to get you to make a endurance check you'll have a plus five because you're a heartless bastard literally you have no heart you're you're kind of <laughs> <laughs> uh two i got a 19 Thanks as, that plus five bonus yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous uh as you're you're stomping a path ahead um there's thousands of tiny cries of pain and death groans. Uh, these these don't really have an effect on you. Uh, you just endure doing the job. People nearby, you see a few people sort of bursting into tears, seemingly overcome with grief and remorse. Others are clearing a path. A few people have got sides out and are cutting them away, just tears streaming down their faces as they do it. Um, everyone who's pushing forwards... Please roll me a uh, endurance check as well. Thank you. Uh, everyone. Everyone. <laughs> oh no, Aurelius is gentle store. <laughs> uh, Morjit and Dragal, you both also don't don't care for or seemingly unaffected by the, the spores and the cries. Uh However, Aurelius and Flint, you are overcome with feelings of grief and remorse, uh, seemingly triggered by the thousands of tiny cries of pain and death groans. Uh, Romy, 1d20. So, oh, no. after about four to five minutes, the two of you are just completely uh, broken down. You simply can't face the work anymore and you have to stop uh possibly getting onto the cart instead and, and just covering your ears and trying to block it out um you'll also have nightmares for days to come uh from this this situation but you, probably within the next day you would realize that uh it is not so much just hearing cries of pain that uh have upset you but more likely the the toxic spores released by the fungi having this effect on you, especially with the, the lingering results. When the cries are finished, uh, the caravans managed to chew its way through what turns out to be almost a kilometer of these fungus. Uh, the lingering results continue until you're completely out of your system. Um, uh, go ahead. Can I? Hmm. In my uh, uh, depressed... Uh, Stupor, can I cut like a sample of this stuff and put it in a vial? I was so worried when you said, Can I cut? I was like, oh, Please don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why do you think so badly of me, man? This is like the second time today. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can cut a sample. Now, uh, as the, the work's continuing, it is quite a path, uh, quite a, um, a hard job, especially with how quickly these, these fungus are growing. Um, within an hour, uh, they've grown six inches tall. Within another hour, as the caravan's almost through, the, the, the fungus you're cutting is about a foot to a foot and a half uh, height. Their growth seems to slow down after that, but um, it does make clearing them a, a lot more difficult. So it takes about six hours total of work um, to, to move the caravan through this this one kilometer. It's pretty much spending the whole day uh, clearing this, you know, this bit of journey. Um, and yeah, you can you can take a couple of the uh, the fungus. You take a few that are small, and they seem to stop growing once you've clipped them and put them in a like a pack or a um, you know, wrap them up in a cloth. Um, yeah, they you got some uh, some humongous fungus. 
Oh man, bring like one or two of those into Dragon Spear in like three days. That place is gonna be infested. <laughs> oh, I I have plans. I have plans. He's gonna make it grow in the dragons on the west. Yes, I am. So while you're you're doing the work, uh, Dragle, you you have a chance to work alongside um, those of this group that aren't giant blubbering babies. Um, <laughs> so you work alongside uh, Morjit and, and Golem clearing a lot of this, and Morjit's mainly up front, just offering tonics and uh, various bits and pieces uh, to those who are doing the real work. Um, but you get a chance to to chat with them and um, get a little bit of background on on who they are. I'm sure Morjit will openly share all of the plans. <laughs> what, are you, what, what are you implying? Are you, are you implying that I'm some sort of undercover person following the, the dragon cult and trying to see where they take their treasures? That That's exactly what it sounds like you're implying. Well, that's that's what is it being implied. No judgment here, Drake. Was it would listen. <laughs> I like you, Drago. We're, we're, we're going to get along good. <laughs> but I like the rest of these judgy bastards. Judgy? Them? No. So, uh, for the remainder of the day, there's only a couple of hours left of this, this day, uh, at least in, in good travel time. Um, the caravan's trying to push harder a little bit further into the evening um, to try and make up for some of the lost time. Um, when up ahead at the front of the caravan where the cultist wagons uh, mostly sort of congregated um, there is a bit of a commotion and the caravan is called to a stop uh, investigating you see that one of the cult wagons has overturned on a difficult corner um, or rather you know, a thin corner where they've been going too fast and have, have gone up on a, uh, a large rock one of the wheels has broken and unbalanced the wagon and caused it to tip um, of the crates that tumble out the back of this wagon, one of them is smashed open. You can see uh, a few of the cultists hurriedly trying to cover up uh, the contents of this crate. But you can easily see, even when you arrive, there are dozens of beautiful items of jewellery um, you know, wrapped in wool. Some of them have sort of splayed open. Um, but you can see that a few people have tried to uh, pocket a few of these pieces of jewellery. Um, doesn't doesn't take much to realize that this is some of the uh, the contraband that's been taken from uh, the nearby town. Yeah, Greenus and all the other towns that have been uh, raided. Uh, the cultists appear angry um, that the people are, are coming around and seeing the contents of their spilled cargo, and uh, yeah, they're they're trying to sort of hustle everyone away while simultaneously scooping up the bits and pieces that have fallen everywhere. Can I, really can I take note of anyone stealing one? Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Nice. <laughs> uh, that hurts me uh, so I, I bathe in the beauty of that pun. This stuff here. So is that all the, all the valuable stuff not meant to be there, or, or what? Well, it's more that the cultists aren't traveling as jewelers or people that would have this sort of um, items. They're traveling as uh, some of them are like cheese traders or people just traveling goods from one place to the next. Uh, so for this sort of high value item um, to be seen is a surprise and would let other members of the caravan know that perhaps who they're traveling with is not not exactly who they're said to be. If that makes sense. 
So, uh, Mojit, you wanted to see who was pocketing stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll get you to roll me a perception. And anyone else that wants to try and spy the same thing can do the same. Okay, so three of you see three different people pocketing items. Are they like cultists or just opportunistic regular folk? Opportunistic other members. The cultists are trying to sort of shuffle everyone away and cover it up. These people attempt to pocket some things as they, they go. Okay, I actually don't see much of a problem with stealing from thieves, so. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking shrug. If anything, this just means that we can be sure those three people aren't cultists. And the last one, who got the flint got the last one. So I'm sending you to you see. Those are the people you, you three see. Um Dragal Aurelius, you sort of see the, the, the cultist just putting everything away. Um you don't really get a good glimpse at anyone, though you do see a few things, a few uh, wads of cotton that seem to have something um, in them that are picked up by the cultists and they sort of glare around like something's gone missing but you didn't see who took it um, as all this is going on a fourth person attempts to pocket something um, one of the uh, the guards from one of the other caravans uh, Orvastia Esserin uh, is a human uh, she's uh, a guard to one of the traveling cloth merchants and uh she is caught red-handed by the cultists um you notice this when there's a cry of uh, uh get get your hands off me i i found this on the ground you it's yours well how how am i supposed to know and uh you look over and you can see um she's got clutched in her hand a uh, a small ornament um it's gold plated uh, it looks to be like a recreation of a deer's head, but it's only six or seven inches in diameter, so it's, it's definitely just like a little statue made of gold. Um, and one of the cultists is trying to, to wrestle it from her grip. Um, and she's, no, possession is, is 19th of the law! Um, and then, without warning, uh, one of the other cultists moves up with a blade and just slashes her in the stomach. Um, she lets out a cry of pain, uh, releases the, the statue and, and grasps her abdomen um, as she, she stumbles back and then falls to the ground. Uh, she lets out a cry, it was, it was good, and then dies. The cultists turn, the one who stabbed her uh, calls out, let that be a warning to any who would get a bright idea about our items on this journey. Can it I... is time for Golem to do a fight. You read my mind. Shit's yes, we need wild. to round up all those other thieves and stab them in the stomach. <laughs> it's funny that ten levels away you've already guessed more G's last word. <laughs> uh, every every time there's a my only regret thing I just I can't help but think of Futurama uh, my only regret is that I had Bonitis Bonitis such a don't worry thing. about Blink <laughs>
Let me worry about Blink. <laughs> uh, Golem, which of your five friends did you train? Did you train Burn Route Stag Straight? Evil Con, Firkin Docker Score, Nizzy Daz, or Orster Grandshot? Uh, I disconnected. Who was the one that actually took a shot at me and got a plus seven? Uh, Orster Grandshot. Yeah, him. He actually would have hit me if I wasn't fucking indestructible. <laughs> okay, let me delete this. I'm thing. trying out new kinds of protecting people as well. And mentorship is a kind of protection. Fair enough. Protect that grand shot into the grave. Also, can we get them some real weapons and maybe get Arster some real armor too? What level are you guys? Uh, five. Five. Yeah. Five. I can uh I can give Grandshot a uh, a bastard sword because I have actually two of them spare. Give me Grand Sword. Uh, a bastard sword to Grandshot. So you okay. can have an actual weapon. Can I sell my brooch of shielding just to give all these people some real gear? I don't even care about the money value. It's quickly turning into they're fire emblem, kind of, isn't it? They're they're kind of endearingly terrible, so I don't want them to die. They've got gumption. Oh god, I'm getting zeitgeist flashbacks. What, don't know what you mean. Uh, the little heroes. Uh. Yeah, um, next session, Skolem's going to uh, join the Blue Lion. So, so the worst house, okay, yep. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, Golden Deer, although... My, uh, also, my first... the other worst house. My first run was uh, Black Eagles because I wanted to see what all the fuss about Edelgard was about. The best waifu. I see we got a bunch of fascists in this chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just like, she's, uh, yeah. This is exactly the kind of character that would cause a bunch of uh, controversy. It, it's it's Vriska all over. Oh boy, I haven't thought about fucking Homestuck in years. All right, Auster is a uh, special type of minion. He's tougher than your average minion. Uh, a single attack below twenty damage will bloody him. Uh, a second attack will kill him. Uh, a single attack above. 20 damage will instantly kill him. Okay, so I've got one real party member recruited and the rest are still probably going to die in me. <laughs> so let me check your whole map. Um, wow, those are big pluses. Why are they there? You need the Orster to uh, survive this battle so you can get their S rank support later. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just comes to, someone just comes to um, check on and he's like, oh, they're having their S rate sports conversation. I'll uh, come back later. <laughs> clang, 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 clang. Those are ridiculously big pluses. Why are they on there? Boots becomes a bit more literal than usual. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that was that was good. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh god.
Oh, that's such a bad idea. What's that? Uh, probably, like, take these cultists on right. I still don't see the cult. Yeah, I have to put it on. I have to make up an encounter because I didn't expect you to do this. <laughs> Dead in you spot. Well, I mean, I should really. I should just make like even bushes have a stat block for you fucks. <laughs> we come across a druid with a strange scar on his back, and he murders you all for some reason. <laughs> Oh, wait, that's yeah, your dead. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That was your guy's. Uh, no, that was his fault. <laughs> it's all the druid's fault. He wouldn't have run off if he hadn't tried to skin him alive. Okay, you know, that's a very liberal, you know, definition of skin alive. It was a skin. He was alive! Thing. And you wanted him to tear all the skin off his back! Why don't you tear a parchment-sized skin block off of his back? Is that so... Oh, that's a lot of cultists. Oh, fuck, that's a lot of cultists, yeah. There's the bloodstain from the lady. <laughs> <laughs> she detonated. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, boy, sure. It was, wish, a, uh... it was a gross style of film. She just... <laughs> So I'm going to say so anywhere deep, anywhere in that yellow square. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. It's like in Baldur's Gate when you get a critical hit and they just explode into your blood. Yes. I poke you with a stick. Boom! Uh, so sure, it, sure controller was here. Yeah, boy. It's going to be great. Uh, yeah, anywhere in the yellow square, you can start. Sure, wish our competent controller was here. <laughs> Dang. We have a barbarian now, so they control we things by reducing their hit points to zero. That's true. That's true. I'm sorry, Marcia. You know I love you. I I know. I know. <laughs> if I ask Orster to keep Aurelius and Morgit kind of safe, will he do that, or is he? Super dedicated to following directly behind. Um, actually, I don't know why I put Mariel on there. Mariel's not here. She's asleep in the caravan. It's a real master and commander situation there. Yeah. Oh yeah, initiative, that's right. <laughs> We're all spinning. Uh, I'm gonna use begin the hunt. Everyone's rolled initiative. I can't see Gregor on the map, or... Wait, what? You can't see the map? Oh, I'm not on the tracker. Drag, uh, Dragon. Oh, the there you go, Dragel. Sure. You're on the tracker, and I'll put you on the map. <laughs> Do you feel welcome? Do you... <laughs> I feel loved. <laughs> <sighs> oh, hang on, I need to lock tokens. Oh my gosh! Oh, I'm a welcoming spam. <laughs> Here we go. I've locked the tokens. Oh my goodness. So most of the lackeys at this point are scooping up all of this shit everywhere. And also the gold. <laughs> oh, uh, shit, I forgot. As part of that action. Um, uh, I can mark a target as a hero of curve.
Okay, okay. Oh, am I up? Um, I think Flint. Yeah, you are. Yep. Yeah. Your initiative twenty. Okie dokie then. Uh, <laughs> I am locked diagonal. That's gonna bug me. <laughs> can you fix that spot? You're locked diagonal. Uh, now yeah, you can say that way. Okay. <laughs> oh, I fixed it. Uh, I'm gonna charge that cultist fanatic. Okie dokie. Uh, Go on, yeah. oh. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> charge is a plus one, a plus one to the attack roll, right? Yes, plus one to the attack. All right, so plus two from running attack. Oh, hmm, that shouldn't happen. I should Put hope that's a hit. Put that back up. Damn! Is that plus 18 legit, or did you accidentally do something? Nope, that's legit. Wow. Holy shit! Yeah. Tech team. And yet he's not even black. <laughs> Are we assuming you end there? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Your turn? Well, actually, one down. Okay. Uh, as you, you run up to attack him, uh, he cries out, What are you doing? The, the guy next to him calls out, You dare attack us when we're defending our property? Yes. Alrighty. The, uh, uh, the charge what is this? property, really? <laughs> <laughs> the punishment for thievery isn't death. We're just here to chop off your hands. Alright, Soz with combat advantage. Because you are fucked. Uh, he's going to attack you. What's he going to attack you with? Um, he's going to do rapid strikes. Uh, Alright, so you take damage, and until the end of his next turn. Each time you make an attack against someone that's not him, uh, you will take damage as if you had been hit by that attack. Uh, that is a hell of a mark. Really is. Uh, this one is going to move up, and he's just going to do a deep wound. Or attempt to. Uh, he won't get it. We had decided that we just have traditional combat advantage, right? Not the expanded. I think so. I think so. Okay, so miss is half damage. Mm. Mm. So you take that and ongoing oh, five seconds. Oh, seconds. this is going to be... This might be... Might be a little bit bad for Flint, yeah. And he has marked you as well, but it will override, so there won't be continuous marks, one at a time. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, this one. He is going to just strike you with a sword. Missing, and I don't think that does anything on this one. Um, yep, yeah, that's him. And now the lackeys are all going to look up, huh? What's going on? What? And then that's their turn. Eight of those. Huh? What? What's happening? Oh my. Uh, and they all sort of activate. Morji, to your turn. Um, I'm going to... Jog on up to more asshole cultist. Okay. You're melee? I thought you were a rain. 
I have a plan. Okay. Save me. And I'll, I'll tap him furiously on the shoulder and be like, Brother, brother. Some more of them uh, escape further down the caravan with with other with other trinkets. We should we should take a contingent of these guys and carry on down and apprehend them as well. I saw them with my own eyes. Right, you are. Well, help us deal with this lot, and we'll go and and we'll take. Oh, please, you think you think these fanatics can't deal with it on their own? <laughs> ah, roll me a bluff. Oh, there it is. Oh, right. Take Larry, Barry, Stephen, and Red Roger and uh, head down with them. Can, can, I, can I take Michael, Jonathan, and uh, Tom as well? Take Michael. So okay. He, he tells you to take five of the cultist lackeys. And head down the caravan. Nicely done, Morishi. So they start sprinting off down. What did they look like? Michael runs past. Thanks, Morishita. <laughs> I really wanted to be included again. <laughs> <laughs> and the five of them bugger off. Do -do 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 -do. Jeez, which ones are they? Eleven. Uh, two. How's that for being a control? <laughs> you did it. Well done. Pacifist controller. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Jagel. Dragel. Bagel. Ah, oh, Ramses Bagel. Dragel. Yep, I'm just gonna. I'm not as fancy as Morjeet. I'm just gonna charge this guy <laughs> to the um, east of um, Flint. Alrighty. It's like how Morgie's just talking to him, like, I'll deal with it, and then just whack! Uh, Drago comes out of nowhere, slamming into him on the side. Uh, I see this fucking dude come charging out of nowhere and slam into this cultist. I'm just like, alright, another brother in arms! Ooh, and you bloody him with the hit. Oh, shit. Nice. Alright, that's, that's me done. Alrighty. Uh, Golem, you're up. I can protect Morjeet and hit somebody at the same time. Choke Just it. far enough to chart. And that was my uh, full charge power. So I push him one square back, shift into the square, and I make a secondary attack against Fortitude. And if it succeeds, I knock him. All right. Nice. So he. Is pushed southeast. I'm in his square, and he is prone. And also, I'll mark him because. Okay. Nice. So he goes back there. Yep. And I go down here, and he's prone. I can't grab him at the same time unless I use an action. Do I want to use an action point? I think I want to use my action point. Oh, I charged. Yeah, that's all. Alrighty. Uh, this asshole cultist, I'm going to come around from this side to behind Flint. Actually, no, he's not. I take that back. He's going to stand here. And uh, he cries out. 
impudent fools! You dare challenge us! Uh, and he lifts his fist, uh, and a crackle of lightning and thunder forms above his hand, uh, and then streaks out towards Drago. Oh. So half damage. Lucky. So you take ten damage and are deafened until the end of next turn. Damn. Oh, what a waste of food encounter you missed. Okay. And Next culture, so this is the one that just got walloped by Golem. Uh, he is going to. Oh, I missed that um, aura that he had. Oh, well, I'll do it next round. Um, he's going to shift back one square. He's prone, he has to stand up. Oh, you're right. He does. Okay, he's going to stand. You didn't put prone on him, that's all. You should have the effect to put on him. Oh, it is on my thing, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Um, so he's going to stand up and he is going to uh, whip out a dragon bone dagger and attempt to stab you with it, Golem. And he hits. Oh, shit. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so close to hurt. a crit. So close to a crit. <laughs> uh, just 15 points of damage. And that is his turn. Uh, Auster Grandshot. Uh, now, you won't control him, but you will be able to shout out a command, and he will see if he obeys. Um, like, attack that one, or grab me and give me a message. Like, <laughs> attack Aurelius without healing or bone. Right you are! Uh, and he stands in front of Aurelius. Uh, his greatsword held out in front of him like he's blocking a monster hunter. Relius, you're up. Alright, so I think what I am going to do is... I will move over here so that Flint is in range of my majestic... Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> poor, poor Erster, you, uh... He stands ready to protect you, and you immediately walk right past him. <laughs> Just shove <laughs> past him, like, fuck you. <laughs> then I, uh, I begin to pluck at my songbow to um, essentially play the kazoo version of Baker Street um, <laughs> on Dragon, Cult Dragon Cultist Fanatic. Awesome. So since that hit, that target is now dominated until the end of my next turn, I believe. Holy shit. Very nice. That's pretty good. Um, and it makes, as an effect line, it makes a basic attack against an enemy of my, an enemy of my choice as a free action. So that'll be against Dragon Cultist Fanatic number one. Okay. So, which one is it? It's Phonetic 2 makes an attack against Phonetic 1, did you say? Correct. Okay. And he hits. And deals 10 damage. Alright. Uh, meanwhile, Flint, on the other hand, here's the actual version of Baker Street where I played the, the kazoo version. <laughs> as uh, my majestic word uh, is applied to him. Thank you very much. And if you very want much. to teleport a square, you may, but you know, don't feel obligated. <laughs> uh, actually, uh... Trying to think if I'd be better off somewhere else. Yes. Uh one square over here. That oh yeah, be... it'll be a little bit harder to flank you if you're there or one northeast of that. Yeah. The only reason I don't want to go northeast is because I don't wanna 
move too much. I guess it wouldn't be that big of a deal. We would look super cool if we're all lined up in a row, though. <laughs> That's true, and you know what? Looking cool is way more important than anything. So yeah, uh, I'll teleport to that square on the northeast then. Thank you. Okay. So where the blood splatter is? Uh, not northeast, sorry, northwest. Okay. Close this team, because shit just got real. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with that, that should be a standard move in minor. That's going to be my entire turn. Oh, Flint should have gotten a turn. What's up? Flint's turn got skipped. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, shit, sorry. Oh. Ooh, Go ahead, get Flint. another save, fantastic. Um, who has me marked? It's Dragon Cultist Fanatic 1, right? Yes. Because he overrode the uh, other fanatic. Okay. Um, I'll yeah. shift one down. Okay. Now, uh... Oh, you got moved out of the aura. That's annoying. <laughs> uh... Hmm. Okay, well... We're all controllers now. Uh... Fuck. Okay, I'm just going to uh, use Twins. Gross. Okay, that's better. <laughs> nice. A 19 and a 20. Oh, no, nah, unfortunately, I'll take the one. Wait, no, that was a damage. Target takes an extra damage. It's a twice the enhancement bonus, so that's. Oh, that's still. Oh, well. Did you not get a critical effect? Have I turned that off on this? Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. Nice. Yes. Oh. Uh, and with a minor action. Oh, I know why. I don't have the crit tables. <laughs> It. And Flint gets its messy revenge. I do have the crit table. Alright, critical hit effect. Just. Uh. Oh, hey, that's. That's good. That is pretty good. <laughs> really Where's good, actually. Table? Oh, uh. You click on the like little shield icon and it says the result terrifying to be oh. strike oh. causes all enemies within three squares of the target to make a saving throw if failed they spend their next move action being physically Ill. if not applicable the attacker gains free ap okay so the phonetic two and the phonetic three both both are physically ill in the next move action Yes, that was so. pretty terrifying. You did just full health to zero him in a single turn. So. Yep. Yes. Just uh, tearing into him with my swords. Uh, I don't see us getting into another fight before a long run. Famous last words. Uh, I'm going to action point. Remember, a long rest isn't just a night when we're traveling in 40 days. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to uh, twin strike again. Hmm, these are some fun rolls. Uh, 
And that's my turn. Just a flurry of sword slices towards these guys. All right. And Fnatic 2 is still dominated. Fnatic 2. I believe this, this creature has a mark, right? Uh, yes. Well, I want Dragon Cultist Fnatic 2 to march over to Asshole Cultist and use its mark attack on. I... Single action, right? For domination? Not sure. I feel like every time something's dominated, I have to look up these rules because I always forget. Single action for the creature to take standard a move, a minor, or a free action. Okay. Dominator, we're going to choose powers or game features that can be used at will. Anything with limited use doesn't qualify. Yeah. So what am I have for this guy? Uh, you can make him do a merely basic attack. You uh -huh. can make him charge, but that would mean the Fnatic 3 and the Cultist to the left are not targets because they are too far away. Um, okay. And that's it. Okay. Have him charge more asshole cultists? Yeah. Um, I'll have him do that. I'll have him charge more asshole cultists. Okay. It's either that or Lackey 10, I think. Yeah, right. So you go one, two to here. And he'll make a attack. Ooh, he missed. Damn. Damn. Alrighty. Because he's dominated and that was considered by forced movement, he wouldn't take an op attack. I think that counts as well. dead. Uh, that's a good point. Now let's choose a single action for you to take. It doesn't necessarily yeah. say. So I think you do. I mean, I'm not going to say no, but I mean. Yeah, I mean, I think it could be ruled either way. I mean, yeah. if you want to give Flint an opportunity attack, I will gladly. A common tactic is to simply a... have them walk past multiple allies or even charge on enemies to provoke multiple opportunity attacks. Yep, so he'll make the charge and provoke an op attack from uh, Flint. Hell yes. Of course. No. Um, so I think you have a moment of, is this wrong? And then he just runs past. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops, I skipped a few there. Nedic. So... Oh, yeah, and uh, real quick, sorry, Spy, I, I had a question. How public is this? Public as well. mm -hmm. So this guy did his rapid strikes already and I didn't click it, so I just need to do a D6, 5 or 6, it recharges. Yep, it recharges. Um, so he's going to use his rapid strikes again. This time he's going to use them on Dragal, the one who attacked him. Ah, oh, actually, it's one or two creatures. You can do it on Dragal and Golem. Oh boy. Oh, something just froze. Did someone just reconnect? Yeah, sorry, I was trying to check something and I fucking uh -huh. the X. Sweet, all good. Ah, oh, come on, just fucking cock teasing me with the crits. <laughs> you did still hit us both pretty hard. Yep. 
Um, and both of you are marked with his super cool mark. Okay. Oops, yep, that went on him. Yeah. Take that off him. And that's his turn. The lackeys are finally going to activate. Uh, they pull up all three of them. And they shout, get that one! Uh, and shoot Flint. With the hand cross. Actually, two of them will shoot Aurelius. One of them will shoot Flint. Because one of them got confused. And was like, ah, oh, that one? And goes for the wrong person. All right, Aurelius is too far away. Crossbows just don't work. Flint takes five damage. There's Mojit's turn. Um. Hmm, my fantasy grounds isn't responding. That's cool. Fantasy Grounds are having a lot of trouble tonight. Hmm. I'll, uh, jog up over the guy. Oh, God! Thank God! And <laughs> behind, behind this, this guy. And I'll tap him furiously on the shoulder, too. Yeah. And I'll be like, ah, oh, we, 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 we need to go. We need... We, we need to go and uh, secure the other caravans. Go get uh, uh, Rizmir. Is she still here? No. Uh, Fulham. Yes, Fulham's, Fulham's a mighty mage. Yes. Somebody. We need to go get help. So who are you saying that to? Uh, this dude beside me. Um... I'm probably going to say that he's not going to fall for it. He's one of the bossy ones. He might send some of the lackeys. Oh, that, that's cool, that's cool. I'm like, just just trying to sit in the ranks. Go ahead and roll a bluff again. Because I'm trying really hard not to break my cover here. Yeah. You don't want to actually attack anyone. You're, you're doing great, Morji. For someone that like bullshits a lot, I've got really bad, bad bluff. <laughs> bad bluff, bad diplomacy. Yeah, um, someone just asked as well how how public this fight is. Uh, the answer is extremely public. Uh, many of the caravaneers are, are watching this. Um, this caravan and this group of cultists is just the group for this one wagon. Um, and you know there to be what, like half a dozen to a dozen cultist wagons around? Just so she's well, aware. We have a cover story. Okay. What's the cover story? Dragon cultists. <laughs> and I guarantee they have proof in their caravan. Easy peasy. <laughs> So, what's the uh, the direction you want those lack lackeys to go? Further back uh, along the... We'll, to... we'll go the other way now. <laughs> ah, some, some went to the south. <laughs> oh, what? They did? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and those three will... Away. The running away sound. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Morgit, that's your turn. Uh, Dragle. Dr. Bagel. All right, I'm Mark, so I guess I'm going to weigh into that guy to the southeast of me. All righty. I might even rage, I think. I was going through a bit of a rage. Let's just see if we can. Ooh. You sure you don't want to take a different one? <laughs> Well, he's only, he's, only, he's only just bodied, isn't he? Yeah. And they take, they've taken a few, they tend to take a bit of damage before they get bodied. See what happens, eh? Yep. Let's do it. 
Nice. Splat. Holy shit. Did as. God damn. Holy shit. It's it. I can move. I can use. I've got some other ability. I think it is willing large. I can shift two squares and damage someone. Where would you like to shift? Okay. I guess there's only one guy I can hit. And I'll just drop damage up. And that's me down. Okay, as you finish your turn, uh, this asshole cultist, the more asshole cultist, um, lets out a shout, That's enough! Uh, and with his, um, or around him is a whipping wind aura that lets him slide you three squares as a free action. So he's going to slide you over to here. That's what I forgot last time. Um, and he shouts, This fight must finish. You have killed the one whom you had a beef with. Uh, pointing to the body of the, the fanatic who's dead on the ground. The one that had slashed the uh, the guard who had stolen. Let this be do done. Oops, excuse me. He burps halfway through. Oh, pardon me, the wind. <laughs> Get it? Because, yeah. The wind? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, was, was good. Um, and he, he sort of holds up his arms uh, at the end of Drago's turn and says, Surely this fight is finished. Your point is proven. Uh, and awaits Golem's turn. Do you know who I am? The Muffin Man! I am Golem <laughs> the Unyielder. And I, I wanted, I just want to see if, if there's recognition on his face. Um, I'm gonna see if he knows you. Would they Is know you like by a name? Skill check? We've had a bad habit of killing everyone to a man. Yeah, I don't think you've left anyone alive that would know your name. Like, you killed Sienrath. Uh, <laughs> I'd be, um, be fair. That first fight with... Uh, <clears throat> uh, outside of the... In yeah, outside the castle. It was pretty public. I don't think we killed all those cultists. But you didn't call yourself Golem the Odd Wielding then, did you? Because you lost. Oh, that, that is true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Fair point. Uh, you see, like a glimmer of recognition. I don't know the unyielding. Are you the fool who tried to take on Sea and Wrath? I oh, we have a trophy of this, don't we? I won round two. Like, don't we have like one of his teeth or something? <laughs> and then I'm going <laughs> to use my crushing foot daily. Okay. Just Sparta kick him. You grab your foe and smash them to the ground. You then place your foot on his neck and keep the creature down. Um, It's prone and until the end of encounter, the target cannot move. It was grabbed by me at the start of the turn. Alright. At the end of your turn, once you've killed him, <laughs> you just you put your foot on his neck and you hear distinct cracking noise. I'm gonna action point then. All right. And then I'm gonna charge uh, the other asshole cultist. Also, yeah, Aurelius. I think I think we took something from. See in wrath, I just can't remember. I haven't even used my move action yet, right? So I can move in then action point? Um, yeah, that seems so. And I mark this one. Alrighty. At the end of your turn, you are whipped three squares away. Oh, well, he's still marked. He is. Uh, he whip. The wind whips you away. It's his turn. Uh, he shouts out, 
Cease! Uh, and he points to the south where you see those three um, lackeys that Morjit sent to the south returning with the next caravan's group of, of cultists. Uh, Stop this folly up. now! Uh, and he will wait a moment to see if you all continue to attack. This will be your choice whether you continue to attack. Bearing in mind, this is one wagon's group. And again, almost a dozen cultist wagons on this caravan. Do you wish, only halfway through your journey, to kill all the cultists that you're trying to infiltrate and follow? Flint will, uh... Or yeah. die. <laughs> Potentially die. That's, that's the other thing that might happen. <laughs> <laughs> Should we put this up to a vote? This feels like a vote now. It does feel like a vote uh, now. Okay, this works out well because someone can like hold Golem back or at least make a show of it. Because Golem was the one who started the fight, I think. Yeah, you made it pretty clear your intention was to go in and smash the faces. Uh, seems like we're gonna stop here. So, uh, you can RP stopping Golem now if you like. We'll, we'll come out of combat because it looks like yeah. the, the group consensus is to stop before things get more out of hand. Uh, Flint will just kind of twirl his swords a little bit and put him back in their scabbards and kind of put a hand on Golem's shoulder. And... I, I understand that you want to keep going and get these guys and crush all opponents that come before you, but the the smart move right now is to give it some peace, all right? We'll take all of them out in time. <sighs> I'm sorry, I just started. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, as, as you're sort of talking Golem away from killing the rest of the cultists. As this fanatic sort of slinks away, his own daggers out, uh, he can see that, you know, if he was to continue to fight as well, he would he would die before his friends arrive. Um, and with the, the next group of cultists arriving, a couple of, uh, a couple more arsehole cultists turn up um, demanding to know what the meaning of this is. Now, you can use your same reasoning, you know, they, they killed this woman who all she'd done was pick up a uh, a gold ornament that had dropped to the ground um, and you will be supported by the other witnesses, the other uh, caravaneers that saw this whole thing unfolding um, you know, killing someone over a, a trinket that was already being recovered is is not acceptable uh, and it's easy uh, to see that the cultists would rather maintain the caravan as it is, rather than, you know, have everyone leave because they feel like they're going to get murdered in the next couple of days. Um, they try and keep the peace somewhat, and they're like, well, what's done is done. Uh, but you note that uh, you are eyed up as a group fairly heavily for the ones that got involved. Um, and Morjit, that afternoon, uh, there is talk amongst the cultist camp of... Uh, dealing with the, that lot the next opportune time. So they've, they've put a mark out. Uh, they're not making any action right now, but they're certainly they're not going to shed any tears if uh, something were to happen. Okay. Uh, and with that, I'm going to have to end there. Um, I need to get ready and, and get ready to go for work. Um, sorry we started late. And only had a short session, but we got uh, a combat and a bit of RP in there. We almost almost broke two outs, um, and we'll we'll go from there. Uh, before we go, it is coming up to the Christmas time, so I'm going to end the recording here, and then we will discuss availability.